Hey, this is Brandon from Sparksmith helping you see and be seen. Today we're going to open up a set of our tow mirrors for the 03 to 07 Silverado and show you how to install them. So first, get them out of the box. I still get excited about this and I know what's in the box. It's like Christmas every time. Side, but you see the passenger side here. It should come like this. They have a heater built in, they have a turn signal function, they have a reverse light function. They do extend. I can show you that when I get them mounted on the truck, it's just easier. And they've got a switchback sequential turn signal function built into them. On the wiring, and this is the part we'll go over in a little more depth, you've got two factory plugs. This plug has wires for the heaters. These three wires are for what moves the mirror up, down, left, right. And then this wire is for your turn signal. And this wire is just a ground. And those should plug into your factory wiring. Then you got these three extra wires, the blue, the gray, and the white. The blue wire goes to the white running light function. The white wire goes to the reverse light function and the gray wire is the ground for the reverse light. So we'll take this over to the truck. I'll show you how to remove the door panel, bolt this on, and wire it up. Okay, we'll go over how to remove the door panel. If you've got that part figured out, you can just go ahead and skip this section and get to the wiring. But you're gonna need something, some sort of panel popper, a seven millimeter socket, and a T20 Torx bit. First thing I'll do is on the back edge of the door, careful with this one because you're popping off a little plastic cover. You don't want to get the whatever you're prying with back behind this metal part because you can mess it up. So just be gentle about popping that off. On the front edge, it is actually like one of those plastic rivet type things. Um, and you also have to pop off the slider for the door lock. Then behind the lock, there's a seven millimeter screw. That guy right there. Then there's another one tucked down here below the armrest. You do want to remember the longer one goes behind that armrest and the shorter one goes behind the door lock. Last thing is to get that piece of trim off. And then get this Torx bolt out. And the whole thing should, you have to slide it up because it has plastic hooks that go in and hook in down at the bottom here. So don't just go yanking on the panel, you're gonna break stuff. Oh, pull this off. It should just slide right off like that. There is a screw down here on the bottom. You don't have to take that off. All that's doing is holding this storage tray in place. So you don't have to take that one off. Uh, Yours is like mine, the light will probably just pop out by itself because these trucks are old and that's what they do. And then you just gotta undo the electrical connectors here. Hard off, um, you've got your plugs left here. These two, if you notice from when we looked at our mirrors, it's got these same two, a black plug and a blue plug. The wiring is held onto the door. get your wiring out first before you unbolt the mirror. It's just a 10 millimeter socket to get these three nuts off. And 
Now the new mirrors come with new nuts to install them with, but if yours are in good shape, I'd recommend using the factory ones just because they have a much bigger, sturdier washer to them. So that's the old mirror out of the way. that the wires pull all the way through and don't get pinched between the body and the mirror. I'm gonna get If you're doing this by yourself like I am, um, you wanna start with that top nut on there that'll hold it on better than if you try to put the bottom ones on first um, but you can see like what comes with it are these tiny little things and these just have unless you throw it on the floor a much better washer to them okay so next step this one has the Bose system so I'm not sure if other sound systems or other uh, trim levels have the same thing but to get the speaker out this one just has a metal clip. You just like push down on the metal clip and the speaker just folds out of the way. You can kind of let that hang because your next goal is gonna be to take this bundle of wire. And this is the fun part, especially when knowing you have to do it twice. You have to get these wires under the dash. So the way to do that properly is if you come over here and look there's this rubber boot where the wires run through and it kind of takes this s curve so that they don't get bound up from opening and closing the door multiple times so you have to fish these wires through this rubber boot um, that part can be a pain in the butt but basically you have to release these two retaining tabs one at the top and one at the bottom and you have to kind of squeeze those in and then this piece will pop out it's a similar story back here I'll get this kick panel off and we'll get this one popped out and that'll make it a whole lot easier to run these wires through here when you can kind of manipulate this otherwise you're just gonna be fighting yourself and if you're trying to run you know like a metal rod or something through there there's a really good chance you'll mess up or damage some of the existing wiring and then you've had a bad day so let me get this part out so i got the body side thing off come in here and take a look it's just like the one that was attached to the door where it's got and these two retaining clips i had to get because i had to come in through here i just got a long screwdriver and used that to kind of pry down and pry up to pop these little retaining clips loose and then what I'm doing is I'm trying to keep this kind of straight up and down. I'm going to take my wire and I have it taped to a thin strip of metal and carefully run that up through this boot to get it inside. Once you've done that, you're, the rest of it's really simple. It's just this part here can be kind of a pain in the butt. Take your time with it. Go slow. You don't want to damage these wires. Uh, but be patient with it and you can get this through here like i said the goal is to get this boot as short and straight as you can and that will make it a lot easier so as i said before the 
Blue is for your white running light. White is for reverse power and gray is for ground for that reverse light. Um, you can get a ring terminal and crimp it on here. I was gonna use, you just gotta find some clean metal somewhere under the dash. There's several bolts to choose from. If you look under here, one of the two that was holding the OBD2 port on, I pulled that nut off. And one thing you can do if you don't have any ring terminals laying around is you can just strip a little extra length of wire and just kind of wrap it around like that. And since it's in the truck and not outside the truck, you don't have to worry about moisture and corrosion and dirt and all that stuff. But just kind of wrapping the wire around like that it's a little bit of a shade tree mechanic thing, but you know, if you're in a pinch and you're out of ring terminals, the ring terminal is the ideal way to do it. But if you want to do it that way, it's not gonna hurt anything. So the next thing I was gonna do is wire up the blue wire for the running lights. There's a number of different ways you can do this. There's a couple of places under the dash with either a dark brown or a dark brown with white stripe wire that most of those are gonna control like the parking lights. So if you wanted to come on with the parking lights, you can do that. What I'd like to do with mine, um, just one, it's easier, and two, I'd like it to um, function this way. I want it to come on anytime the key's on, so it acts like a true running light. One way to do that is right here in this fuse panel on the end of the dash, there's a 10 amp fuse that says SEO accessory. There's no one that says, another 10 amp says TBC accessory. Both of these fuses, only have power when the key's on. So what you can do is this, I'm gonna use this one, the SEO. You pull that fuse out. I'm gonna start including these fuse taps with the, uh, the mirrors. If you bought mirrors from us in the past and you didn't get one of these, just email me and I'll send you one, I don't mind. So put that 10 amp that you pulled out in the bottom slot, then install the fuse tap back into that slot and now this will have power anytime the key's on. So all you gotta do is run the blue wire from each of your mirrors over to this and that white light will come on as soon as you turn the key on. Okay, so this last one that we have to do is the reverse wire. If you recall, that's the white wire, where is it? Yeah, the white wire coming from the mirror. So underneath the dash in the driver's foot well, you've got this junction box there's like a plastic nut on here you just spin that off pull the cover off and you'll see that over here on the right hand side is this brown plug and you're after you can see I've already tapped into it with uh, my backup camera system that I've got on here but the same concept applies After this brown plug, in the top right corner, there's a light green wire. That wire is the power for your reverse lights. So you can do basically what I've done here, which is to cut, strip, and crimp one of these red butt connectors, and your white wire will come in, and you crimp it in there, crimp it on the other end, hit it with a heat gun or a lighter or something like that, and that'll kind of seal it up and make it a solid piece. And that's where you get your reverse power is from this little brown plug that's in this junction box that's in the driver's foot well. Okay, one thing I wanted to touch on real quick while we're in here is if your truck didn't come equipped with turn signals in the mirrors, there's a pretty easy solution for that. You'll just extend the red and yellow or red and orange wire. You'll cut it off of that blue plug and you'll extend it through with your other three wires through this boot. You'll come over in this uh, fuse panel on the end of the dash. There's two 10 amp fuses right here and right here. Those are for your left and right turn signals. So you can get another one of these fuse taps like we had up here for the running light and use a fuse tap to get your turn signal power from right there. Because those fuses only have power as the turn signal's blinking. So, um, just an easy way to grab turn signal power if it's not already in the door of the truck. Okay, we've got everything wired up. Now before you put everything back together and bolt the door panel back on and all that, you wanna test everything so that you're not 
working against yourself if you have to go back and make some adjustments. Uh, so for mine, I'm gonna turn the key on. You should get that white for the running light. And you get the amber for the turn signal. And you've also got the red indicators here for your turn signal. And last but not least, you get the reverse light function when you put it in the reverse. Once you've tested all that out, and then check your power mirror, make sure it goes up, down, left, right, all that, you're good to go. Then from there, installation is the reverse of removing it, and so just backtrack all your steps and put everything back nice and neat like it was. Make sure that all the wires are away from anything that moves and anything that gets hot. And that should be it. If you got any questions about it or need some more help, email us at support at sparksmith.com. We're here to help.